Hi, Kirk Jungi here from learninggolf.tv. This video today is part of a seven step learning program for my single plane setup for impact golf swing. And what I've done is broken the seven steps into separate videos, as well as a couple longer videos. And one complete video is also available here on my channel. So please click the red subscribe button below to get notified as I release new videos and also accept notifications for my channel on YouTube. So you'll basically just be notified on YouTube that I've released a new video and visit learninggolf.tv for information on my upcoming schools, which basically give you the experience of hands-on customization and making sure that you do all of my drills, get the setup perfect to give you the fastest improvement possible. There's also my inexpensive membership, which allows you to send in videos through the free V1 Golf app for my review. So thank you very much, enjoy the video. Okay, we're gonna jump right into this, starting with step number one, which is grip and how to hold the golf club. Step one is very important, obviously. So the way that we put the hands on the golf club can differ a bit from person to person based on hand size and grip size and other factors. And basically how you play golf your whole life, if you play golf with what's considered a strong grip your whole life, then I would like you to keep that starting out. If, as you go on and start doing drills, the ball starts uh, curving for a right-handed golfer to the left, then we would make an adjustment to the grip and go more to the neutral position that I'm going to use as the baseline neutral grip for this concept. And so, starting out, when we put our hands on the golf club, we need to make sure that we're able to create an angle between the leading arm and the golf club. And this is very, very important. So I'm gonna take the club and hold it like this. And then in this position, I'm gonna to check to see that the leading edge of the club is horizontal here. And in this position also, the back of my leading hand is flat. So I could put a glass of water here and the leading edge here is also flat. So it looks like this, or if I went at an angle, this is matching basically the back of the hand is matching the aim of the club face so when i do this i'm making sure that i can get close to a 90 degree angle up like this we don't need we don't want more than 90 degrees that would make it uncomfortable here in the setup we also don't want to go too diagonally through the hand like this as that would put the club or make it more difficult to create leverage in the golf swing so basically it's going through the hand like this and you can see it's kind of in alignment here with my thumb and going across the hand this way it's not in the lifeline it's going across the lifeline and you'd see if i was going to reach out i fit the club into my fingers like this i find the position where it fits comfortably in the palm of my hand but with the fingers wrapped around so i hesitate to call it a palm grip or a fingers grip it's basically in between. The most important point is that the orientation of the club to the leading arm is what's most important. We want to have the club it set up so the grip is pointed underneath the leading arm like this. We don't want it out like this because if we come into impact as we should, then the club is gonna to tend to be open and in order to hit a straight golf shot, you're going to need to manipulate the club face. So we wanna make sure that when we hold it like this, the club here is square, the back of the hand is in a neutral grip towards the target. If you catch yourself and you're more this way, that's fine. Uh, let it be a little bit stronger. And again, we can always adjust later if the ball does fly to the left, but a lot of you have been swinging for 20 years with a stronger grip position and your body is used to making the move necessary to keep the club face square through impact. So my goal as is always that we improve going forward, that from one day to the next that you hit the ball better, not that we take steps backwards or that we have to practice for six months, don't play golf and all that. I just don't like that. I disagree with that philosophy and I've worked for many years when people come to a lesson my goal is that you hit the ball better when you leave the lesson. And it's the same here that I want you to improve. You watch this video and you implement the steps necessary for your game and you improve. 
not that you go backwards. If you're going backwards or getting worse, you're doing something wrong, then you can send me a video through my membership program. It's very inexpensive and I can guide you in the right direction so you don't waste a lot of time doing things wrong. In my experience, uh, people get one part of the setup wrong and they're compensating for that and that's why they're inconsistent. So you need to get every step correct. It helps to use video to be able to check on each step. So the lead hand grip we talk about, getting it in a position where we can get the wrist cocked a little bit here like this and the orientation of club neutral has it fitting this way. We wouldn't go weak of neutral, uh, which would have the back of the hand here and the club face like that. So anywhere from here to very strong, a Dustin Johnson type grip would be here. So you can see the toes up here quite a bit. Uh, that would be also acceptable if you're hitting the ball straight from there, uh, then there's no reason to change it. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. And that's my philosophy. I'm looking for fast improvement. I want you to play the best golf of your life. And I'm certain this program will help you to do that. So moving on with the grip, once we are comfortable putting the leading hand on the golf club, and we wanna see that we do this the same every time. And I'm gonna be going over, as we get into the setup, my setup routine, which I check and make sure that I set up to the ball identically for every golf shot. But first we have a routine, we're putting the leading hand on the golf club. I would check the orientation every time, whether it's, it's here, which is neutral, or we go a little bit stronger. Uh, and that also enables you during the course of a round to make corrections if the ball's going right or left. Instead of thinking about your golf swing, we can just make a little correction to the grip and it will most easily help you get through the round and possibly even put in a great score. So once I have the leading hand on the club, I'll check it. Then we're gonna talk about putting the trail hand on the golf club. What we're going to do for the trailing hand is take it like this, take the arm, and we're gonna also bend the arm a little bit at the elbow, and that's basically bringing the upper arm against the body and you can see the arm is like this so it's a little bit bent here looks like this it's a little bit bent and then what we're going to do is take the arm and we're going to basically supinate or rotate it away from the target like this so it's about a 45 degree angle and then we're going to put it on the golf club with a bent arm position that looks like this so my elbow's not touching my body but close and the upper arm is touching the body. What we're doing is putting the trailing arm on the same plane as the golf club at setup, and that's where it's going to be as you swing through impact. So we're sliding the club, basically, or the grip into the hand, so it looks like this. We're rotated this way, and I slide it under the fingers until the hand fits together. I'm not going to wrap the hand over. I'm gonna keep it underneath. I'm doing an overlapping grip, which is my number one choice. And we can slide it in so it's fitting in the hand. At no point am I gonna rotate the hand this way or pronate the arm. I'm gonna keep it in position here. The thumb is a little bit over. I feel this finger here, it's like a trigger finger as well. It's basically fitting together. For each person, this may be a little bit different, again, based on hand and grip size that it's fitting comfortably here together. If you look here, it's just laying on top, the little fingers laying on top of the index finger of the leading hand, so it looks like this. Now, I have many people that I teach in my schools or private lessons will have a 10 finger grip. Again, as long as there's no space between the hands, this is acceptable. My first choice is though overlapping, and then if interlocking, if you can keep the same orientation, that's also acceptable. So once we have the trailing arm on the club properly and we're looking at the setup, you could look in a mirror and what we want to see is that the trailing arm, at least to the elbow, is on the same plane as the golf club. So if we laid the golf club on a tabletop, the club and the trailing arm to the elbow would be in perfect alignment. So you need to check yourself on this point. This is really the most important point of the whole method is putting the trailing arm in this non-rotational position. From this position here, we're not gonna have to manipulate the hands in order to square the club face. So it's most important that we get this alignment correct as we put the hands on. And I'm gonna go through that in our next step, which is the setup and the setup routine.